Greetings, Jackery is back again with yet another mammoth-sized power station. This one is called the Home Power 3600 Plus, and it competes directly with similar class products from other major manufacturers. They've been a bit late to the game coming out with full-sized home backup models, but have evidently been playing a very fast game of catch-up. They claim this 3600 watt beastie is smaller and lighter than the competition, but is it any good? Let's find out. This model packs a 3584 watt hour LFP battery rated 6,000 cycles to 70% capacity when charged at their suggested standard speed. As for size and weight, it comes in at a very compact 19 by 15 by 12 inches approximately and weighs in at a tidy 77 pounds, which to my knowledge is in fact significantly less than other similar size competitors. It sports the standard Jackery color LCD that shows all the basics such as input output watts, time to charge discharge, battery percent with icon, for a total of 22 pieces of information. Modern Jackery screens are always high quality and easy to read in all kinds of light. As for the inverter, the 3600 Plus packs a big surprise here. 3600 watt pure sign inverter with 7200 watt surge through four 20 amp outlets and a TT30R 30 amp appliance or RV hookup. Unlike most other models, this can actually output the full 30 amps continuous to your RV, welder, or other high powered appliance. As for ways to charge, you can of course charge via AC grid or generator at up to 15 amps or 1680 watts with the included cable. And that takes about two hours at max speed or two and a half hours on standard. It does sport a 1000 watt MPPT controller on the side Good for a zero to 100 charge in about four hours under ideal conditions. Fortunately, it is not XT60 connectors like its bigger brother, the 5000 plus, but instead uses a pair of Jackery standard proprietary 80, 20 barrel plugs in parallel. You can also dual solar and AC charge in about two hours. Note the only cable that comes with the home power is the standard 15 amp AC charging cable. There's no 12 volt charging or solar adapters included. As for 12 volt outputs, there are zero zilch zip nada. Not even any kind of pricey add-on accessories like some other competitors. Yanking the 12 volt support seems to be a growing trend, especially for these larger home backup style models that oddly still tote wheels and a luggage style handle with 30 amp hookups. So you'd expect they might also pull double duty for camping as well. Except if you have a 12 volt fridge or other 12 volt appliance, which most campers do, you're simply SOL with the 3600 plus. As for USB, the 3600 does offer well-rounded USB support with a standard 100 watt USB-C power delivery outputs with two of those, along with a pair of QC USB-A outputs. No five volt dinosaur boards here. As for other features, the 3600 Plus can be paralleled together with another 3600 Plus for 240 volt output, and while at the same time taking up to 21 kilowatt hours of external batteries through the external battery port on the side. So it is quite scalable for home backup use. It also offers a UPS mode that had an unpublished switch over time in the manual when I was doing my initial testing, but since the web page went live the next day, it now states it has a 10 millisecond backup UPS switch over, which is consumer grade and quick enough for just about anything most will throw at it. As for the warranty, Jackery does offer a five year manufacturer warranty on this product. And of course we took the product into the secret lab here. We performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it. As for the results of the AC battery capacity test, it scored 3240 watt hours out of 3584 for a rock solid above average 90%. Now as for the parasitic drain standby test for AC consumption, we're changing how we calculate this from now on because I found out there's a lot of discrepancy between the MPPT controllers when you recharge those via the DC port. Some tend to be very efficient while others are not. So we're gonna go old school here and use the percent display to factor how long the battery's gonna last when the inverter is left on with nothing plugged in and therefore how many watts it weighs. I'll also recharge the unit using the DC port to give you an idea of how efficient the MPPT controller is. So yes, there is a margin of error with both ways of testing, but this at least gives you a general idea of comparison between different products. So I left the unit on with the inverter enabled for a full 24 hours and it used 14% of the battery according to the screen. 14% of 3,584 watt hours is about 502 watt hours wasted or approximately 21 watts idle consumption 
for the inverter. Now, when we used solar to recharge it back to 100%, it took 672 watt hours at eight amps to recharge the battery according to my meter with shunt. Since it used 672 to recharge instead of the expected 502, we divide those two to get 75% efficiency of the MPPT controller. That means 25% of the power going into the solar is wasted to heat. That's not really a great result. Now you see why I decided to change how I do this test. Going by how much power it takes to recharge the battery via solar can be wildly inaccurate if the MPPT controller itself isn't that efficient. As for standby time, if you left the inverter on at the expected 21 watts of idle consumption, it would totally kill this battery in about seven days. Now that's excellent for a one-to-one -one battery to inverter ratio, meaning this has a 3,600 watt battery with a 3,600 watt inverter. Now I'm always asked how long stuff's going to run on these kind of products to so compensating for usable capacity. You can pause this chart. I'm gonna put it up here on screen. It's gonna tell you approximately how long common appliances will run on this particular unit. Results with a pure sine wave check under load was 119 volts, 60 Hertz, that's a pass. Inverter capacity test under max load was 5,100 watts or 42 amps for about five seconds. That was a pass. The cooling ability heat soak test, we ran it for five minutes at 3,600 watts. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Everything works and sounds just fine. It hasn't gotten any louder, no funny smells. All good. Inverter fan noise at max decibels was 55 decibels at max but it was significantly quieter under smaller loads. I think most of the time, you're probably not gonna hear this thing running. As for the 15 amp saw test, 5,000 BTU AC test, and solar degenerator test, I decided just to run all three at the same time to see if this thing can handle it. I got the 5,000 BTU plugged in right here. I got the heat gun up all the way. We're currently pulling 1,700 watts. Let's see if this 15 amp saw will trip it or not. Well, we hit 4,700 watts on that and it still kept going. So I think that's a pass. All right, AC charging test. Now in the app, you can select if you want quiet, fast, or anything in between, because finally Jackery's allowing you to customize how fast you want to charge. Okay, on quiet mode, it's about 680 watts and the fan is spinning very, very slowly inside. So I wouldn't even try to register that on my sound meter. So there we go, fast charge mode. Now you can see there it's about 1680. So 43 decibels, it's still whisper quiet on max charge mode. And that custom slider bar here lets you go anywhere from 100 watts to 1700 watts of charging. Now Jackery claims that the solar inputs on the side, the MPPT controller can handle from 12 to 60 volts at 12 amps each. As tested, the DC charge rate 12 volts, we are able to pull 95 watts. At 24 volts, 400 watts. At 48 volts, 930 watts. At the maximum 62 volts before it shut off, we're able to pull the magic 1000 watts. Now as for the charging fan noise when running off of AC power, it was a low and quiet 43 decibels. As for simultaneous charging, this does support it with solar priority. It can charge at 1650 watts from AC with 1,000 watts of solar at the same time for a combined 2,650 watts. As for 240 volt charging ability, this does not support it out of the box, but only in parallel with another 3,600. So I did look in the manual, it does talk about the uninterruptible power supply mode. It says it's not zero milliseconds, but it doesn't say how many, and there's the stats page. Doesn't say anything on there about it either, but it says it's not zero milliseconds. That's a big help. Let's go ahead and do this test. You can see I'm running a full screen music video from YouTube in 1080p. It's using about 100 watts of power. The battery is charging from grid power while we're doing this. So all I'm gonna do is just yank the cord out and we'll see what happens. I didn't bother with the switch box today. Three, two, one. It's fine. It's still powering the load. Battery's not charging. Let's plug it back in, see what happens. I hear a click, still powering the load and it's charging the battery. So no freezing, no problems with the computer. That's a thumbs up. USB output rate check. We have the two 100 watt USB-C power delivery outputs. Those pass no problem. 
Musician's favorite amp interference test is where we determine is the inverter clean or dirty? Is it good enough to run a power amp or a ham radio or something without causing static or interference coming out of the speakers? Because some inverters are not clean. Usually the higher end products, the higher end inverters always pass this test. It's usually the cheaper products that don't, but let's find out. Sounds perfectly clean. Now the fan did kick on on this and it was pretty loud and it covered that up, but I can tell sitting right in front of it perfectly clean, so that's a pass. Now the electromagnetic interference test or EMF test with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled because we can't turn those off internally. For DC, it was basically baseline, which is low. The AC inverter scored 80, which is high, but not out of question. As for the extra battery test, Jackery didn't supply an extra battery, so I couldn't test any of that. And if you wanna know what the app looks like, check this out input output watts you can scroll down this is how you adjust the screen you can either have it off turn time out after two minutes or time on after two hours this is where you change your charging settings and your ups settings uh, your auto off times for the different inverter and dc modes and below this is the firmware update and that's literally all there is to it and there you have it all results fell within expectations. There was nothing out of the ordinary. So what do I think about the Home Power 3600 Plus? Now, for the record, this Jackery works perfectly fine and it passed all tests with flying colors, but I still have gripes. First of which is the total lack of 12 volt support. They're basically saying, look how small and light we are. We got wheels and a handle and a 30 amp RV output. You can take us anywhere, just don't take us camping. Except they show a photo of the product on their webpage with folks using it camping. Now, when the brand removes the handle on the wheels and makes them over 100 pounds, I could see yanking the 12 volt socket because most folks aren't taking their actual home backup unit camping or powering 12 volt fridges at home. But something 77 pounds of wheels, a pull handle, bragging on their website about portability, but then totally cripple the number one outdoor use, seems a bit out of touch for a brand that used to plaster power outdoors in large orange front across the front of every one of their products. Next up, everyone else is offering 240 volts in a single unit for their home backup models. How can you call your product home power in 2025 and only support 120 volts out of a 3600 watt power station. Yeah, you can buy two of these with the parallel cable box for an outrageous sum and jack into it a transfer switch to run your home. But why would you when the competition offers 240 volts right out of the box for less than half the price? Granted, this home power 3600 is fantastically portable and quite powerful for running 120 volt appliances. Assuming you plan to roll it around your home using extension cords to every appliance when the power goes out, but right out of the box, this is not powering your home through a breaker box, it's just powering your appliances directly. And last but not least, you guessed it, the proprietary 8020 connectors for the 1000 watt solar inputs are back. First, only 1000 watts of solar support on a 3600 watt power station is a bit on the dated side, and it's only 60 volts max, limiting solar panel use to parallel only. The problem is the limit on those inputs makes it so you can't use more than two panels per port. So forget about using large panels. They don't offer any high voltage PV on this model as they expect you to use their branded low voltage panels, which is fine if you don't already have solar panels and plan to either A, never charge it with solar in the first place, which a lot of home backup users don't do, or B, buy it in a solar generator bundle with their own solar panels. So if you already have non-Jackery branded solar panels, you can use them but you're gonna need about $30 worth of third-party adapters to hook those up, plus the cost of MC4 extension cables. I was really hoping that after reviewing the 5000 Plus that they were going to sunset this aged out barrel plug design, but it seems like they're doubling down on it. Now, I'm gonna to continue to complain about this until they change it like literally every other major brand has over the past few years. There's nothing wrong with XT60 ports or Anderson Power Pole. They don't offer it because they don't wanna make it easy for you to use third-party panels. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. As I said initially, this is a great product and it passed every test with flying colors. And I do believe it is the smallest and lightest 3600 watt hour power station available today. And that's kind of a big deal if you do plan on using this thing outside of your home kitchen during a blackout, because most of these home backup style power stations are simply too large and heavy to load into a vehicle without 
two people. The standby time of seven days and 21 watts of idle consumption for this inverter is also fantastic. A 3600 watt inverter with 3.6 kilowatt hours of battery all available from a 30 amp output is a lot of power from a 77 pound box on wheels. And probably the best part is that this is not priced like the typical buckle watt jackery. This is where removing features like 240 volt support, high voltage MPPT, and 12 volt circuitry pay off. You're not only making the package smaller and lighter, but less expensive to sell. Seeing how price has been a major competing point for Jackery, I have to admit it's probably a smart move for them to get the price down as much as they can. And that takes us to product price. The standard sale price for the HomePower 3600 is $27.99, and that in itself is a pretty good deal for a new Jackery at $0.77 cents per watt. However, there is a link to a special offer available in the description of this video that will knock that price all the way down to $21.99 or $0.61 cents per watt hour. So be sure to check that out. Note that the 30% federal tax credit for battery storage products is supposed to end this year, and this one being over 3 kilowatt hours would qualify you for that credit if you hook it into your home. That in essence will bring the price down into the mid $1,500 range. So that's kind of hard to beat. So if you need a break on your taxes and who doesn't, this might fit the bill. Get it? Okay, never mind. If you're interested, the link and discount code is going to be in the description of this video below. I'm also going to put a link here at the bottom of the screen along with a QR code you can scan on your mobile device if you're watching me on TV. It'll take you on over to the Jackery store page where you can check out the Home Power. 3600 plus. Thanks for watching and until next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.